morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I am going to share the seven biggest mistakes that we make when forming a clarinet embouchure. But before we do that, I want to tell you about the Tomplay apps promotion that's going on. If you sign up for an annual subscription before September 12th, you will get 30% off for the whole year. And what's really cool about the Tom Play app is that they have tons of backing tracks to play along with recorded by real musicians for all different types of repertoire. So you've got classical music. So I was just playing the Mozart Kegelstadt Trio. They have all of the movements on Tom Play. There are a ton of concertos, sonatas, all kinds of classical stuff. Um, in addition to that, they've got jazz and duets and trios and um, popular music as well, which many of my students enjoy um, playing along to also. So um, be sure to check that out. If you use the link that I put in my description, it will really, really help me out because I'm an affiliate with them and I will get a little bit of commission. And so if you use my link, thank you so much for supporting me. You can also support my channel by becoming a patron of my channel. I will include a link below, but patrons get all kinds of perks, including one-on-one -on -one meetings with me, Q&A sessions, and an excerpt book that I released over the summer. So be sure to go check that out. All right, so the seven biggest things that we run into with embouchure. So first of all, let's establish what a good clarinet embouchure is for, right? So we want maximum reed vibration. This is going to give us resonance. It's going to allow us flexibility of tone. It's going to allow us to play more in tune with other people and with ourselves. It'll also allow us to play with full air support at all dynamic levels. And it, it's just going to make everything so much easier to play. So before we get into all the bad stuff, let's go through our embouchure checklist really quick. So first thing is to line up your top and bottom teeth. Second thing, put your bottom lip over your bottom teeth, not inside your mouth, just a little bit over. Then flatten out your chin, corners in, top lip firm. That's three steps, but a really simple way to think about that is to think of something sour. Make a sour face and then you put your top teeth on the top of the mouthpiece and play. And that's it. So the first thing with poor clarinet embouchure is air bubbles. You might get air bubbles. And this doesn't just happen with beginners. It happens with people who have been playing a long time as well. If we that seal around our teeth and gums get lazy or our corners flap around, we're going to get little air pockets in our face. So just think about forming your embouchure around the bone structure of your face. The second thing is to be careful about playing with a strawberry chin. So I mean like, mm, like that. So it kind of looks like a strawberry when you do that. So, um, gross like but anyway um so i that's what i call strawberry chin so you're just if that's happening to you you're just clamping up with your embouchure so uh if you if you really think about bringing that chin down it's gonna help open up your sound and give you more flexibility the second thing is lazy top lip Yeah, so if your top lip isn't really very engaged in what you're doing, high notes are gonna be hard to play without biting, and you'll have less mm, control in the upper register as well. The next thing is too much bottom lip in. Oh man, yeah, so some people just, I don't know. You can, you can get a sound that way, but what happens is you have so much bottom lip in, there's not enough reed vibrating, and so you end up getting like a millimeter of your reed vibrating, and then you have like only one dynamic you can play at, and that's it. And high notes become kind of hard, and, uh, and, and there's no flexibility at all. Uh, the next thing is a thing that I struggle with, and that is embouchure corners. Um, so you want to just make sure that your corners are firm. I imagine just keeping like the corners of my embouchure kind of sealed between my two teeth or my upper, my teeth, I have a lot of teeth, but between my upper and lower teeth. So kind of sealed right in the middle there. 
And that just helps me get a warmer, more focused, clear sound. So my corners are weak. Um, they'll leak even if I'm trying to play softly. And cause sometimes air leaks happen when you're, you're just blowing like a ton of air and you're trying to play loud. But if it's happening when you're playing soft, then you know you got a problem, right? So weak corners. And since I'm a biter, the corners tend to just kind of go Whoa. So I try to keep those in. And then the last thing is something that many people aren't taught, but it can be really helpful in getting a more open, clear sound. And that is making sure your teeth are aligned when you play. So when you do that, it's just gonna help give you more resonance, a clearer, more focused sound. It'll improve articulation and it will actually get more of your reed to vibrate when you move your jaw forward because it just kind of slides down the reed a little bit. So those are my tips for creating a good embouchure and problems to look for in your own embouchure when you are practicing. So I hope you guys find this helpful and feel free to play any tunes you have from the Tom Play app or the Mozart um, on the Facebook group. I have a link in the description below. Can't wait to see some more videos being posted there. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a good week next week. And as always, happy practicing.